Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, yes, we're going to be revisiting the Disney Windows XP NetPal netbook thing that we recently explored in this video. And as suggested by some of you guys, we're going to be restoring the Blue Magic NetPal here back to its original factory state by using the media that I've got burned to this DVD right here. Because it is currently, very interestingly, running Raspberry Pi OS, which is an interesting operating system choice for something that isn't a Raspberry Pi. But at some point, that's what somebody decided to put on here. So we're going to restore it back to its original Windows XP installation. And we'll also be taking a look at some of the additional programs that were not installed on the pink NetPal, mainly the parental controls program, the original one, because if you remember from the other video, the software that was on the pink NetPal was upgraded and it wasn't, you know, Disneyified like this one is going to be. So we'll take a closer look at that. Of course, the first challenge I had to overcome here, which isn't really a challenge at all, is that there's no internal disk drive in this laptop or netbook if you want to be proper here. And that's very common with netbooks because it was usually the first thing to get removed to make these machines a lot smaller. So we're going to be using an external DVD drive right here to accomplish that. And I should also mention that the software I've got burned on this disk is not technically the original ISO file because I had to modify it because the original ISO file, get this, was around 200 megabytes over the maximum capacity that you can fit on a regular DVD. So I went in and deleted a couple of things so that it would fit on this regular disk right here because I don't have any dual layer DVDs and the nearest store that had one was like 45 minutes away and of course the discs were like freaking expensive. Now if you're wondering why I even went through all of this instead of just creating a bootable USB drive from the ISO image, believe me I did try that multiple times with multiple different pieces of software but unfortunately despite everything that I tried I was not able to properly make this into a bootable uh, piece of restore media from the ISO image. It's certainly possible though that it is possible, but I did speak to the guy who originally archived the installation media that I talked about in the first video, and he said that despite his best efforts, he had issues getting this to work as well. So I'm just gonna let the USB drive win that one for now because I already had all this stuff lying around anyway, so we're just gonna go this route. It'll work just fine, hopefully. But first I wanna give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Linode, for continuing to support shenanigans like this on the channel. I'll be talking more about them later on, but for now, let's go ahead and adjust the camera and everything and get this thing restarted stored back to factory settings. Removable medium is inserted, hooray. So the drive works, that's wonderful. Uh, so we're just going to log out of Raspberry Pi OS here and reboot and boot up from the DVD and go through this restore process. Now, just to be honest here, I have done this a couple of times in a virtual machine when I first found the image online. I think it was actually before I even had the Disney Net Pals in my possession because I wanted to explore the software and get familiar with some of the things that, you know, Disney slash Asus put on here. It is a fairly straightforward restore process. In fact, it utilizes a Symantec ghost image and that's the neat thing too, all the stuff that I had to remove to make this image fit on this DVD don't actually affect the restore process whatsoever. On the DVD, on the root of it, there is a software folder and inside of that are all of the ASUS programs that come pre-installed, but they're already contained in that ghost image, obviously. So the programs in that folder were for if you, say, accidentally uninstalled the trial of Norton Antivirus, God forbid, that came with your NetPal and wanted to reinstall it. Also, God forbid. Well, you could do that just by putting in the restore media, browsing to that software folder, going into the Norton folder, and running the executable from there. You don't have to go through the entire restore process again. So, yeah, we're just going to hit OK here. It asks us, you know, do you want to restore? And then, are you sure? Yes, we want to restore. And we'll see some Antec Ghost launch here momentarily. There it is. And if you're wondering what specifically I removed from that folder, well, one of the things was Norton Antivirus. I 
I also got rid of the Skype installer and a couple of the pieces of ASUS bloatware that were in there as well that, I mean, you wouldn't really use. I mean, okay, maybe you would. If you really wanted to use them, you know, you can because, like I said, it doesn't affect the restore image here. So, anyway, it's telling us to please wait, so we're going to wait. Unfortunately, there's no progress bar or anything, so we can't actually see how long that it's going to take. And there we go. It says it's finished. Asks us to remove the DVD. Uh, the glorious Windows XP boot screen. It just celebrated its 21st anniversary of the general availability. Depending on when I upload this, it's either like a day ago or a couple days ago or... Yeah, I don't know exactly when this video is going to go out, but... Yeah, Windows XP, 21 years old, it's kind of nuts to, to think about. But yeah, so here's uh, Symantec Ghost once again. It has to go through this and, uh, and do some more restore things before it properly boots into Windows XP. So we'll let it do that. Reboot! All right. There we go. So the sound drivers are set up properly. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, that is what you would expect here. But yeah... Welcome to Microsoft Windows. Of course, this is going to be Asusified. So, thank you for purchasing this computer from Asus featuring Microsoft Windows XP. All right. So, we got some additional options here your system settings, and then, like, there's a point where you got to, of course, agree to the Asus license agreement as well. So, yeah, here's that. We're going to accept both of the license agreements. Of course, reading them 100% fully. We're not going to bother with the automatic updates. We're going to call this, uh, what's a good name here? Uh, we'll just say NetPal. Why not? Computer description, not going to bother with that. All right. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, no, we're not connected to the internet right now. No, I don't want to bother registering with Microsoft. And we'll just do M for the username. All right, are you guys ready to experience the most magical computer on Earth? I know I am. I mean, it's not like I've <laughs> taken a look at this, I don't know how many times already, but yeah, I, I definitely want to dive into the original parental control software, because that was the one thing that we didn't take a in-depth look at in the original video. I, I did record some footage and overlay it into the first video, and kind of talked about some of the things that you can do with it, but... We're going to actually go through the process of creating a user account with it and, you know, showing off how it replaces Explorer and the limitations that you're able to set up for presumably your, your kid who would be using this or multiple children if you, you know, had this be like a shared computer between people. And it actually starts the parental control software right when you log in for the first time. This is it. So it says, welcome, press start to begin. Okay. So you press start, we're going to create a new user, I don't know, John, okay. Yeah, and you see that you've got the choice between Windows user pictures and Disney pictures. They've got a, a plethora of photos in here of various Disney characters, so we're going to select, oh, why don't we go with Eve here. So we'll select Eve, you can set a password if you want, and just like in the Windows user account panel in control panel, you can change the user picture, rename, or change the password. But you have this additional option of choosing a desktop environment. So you could go with the standard desktop, which it will say that it gives the user access to Windows XP. This option does not include filters or restrictions. So theoretically, you could go through and make standard user accounts with this program as well. But of course, the, the added benefit you get is choosing the Disney desktop environment, which replaces Windows Explorer and comes with limitations you can set up of how long you want people to be logged in, what programs you want them to be able to launch. We'll click on next, and this is where you choose the approved program. So by default, it's got all of the Disney programs in here. So, you know, Mix Central, Disney Picks. We took a look at these two programs in the first video. We also have some additional stuff, FunCam, which ties into the parental control software. In fact, if we go into all programs here under Easy Bits for Kids, which is the name of the parental control software, you've got the internet browser, the email client, the Windows Explorer file browser replacement, and the FunCam program, which is just a piece of webcam software. So, yeah, in addition to that, you also have WordPad, Sound Recorder, um, again, some Disney stuff, Minesweeper, Pinball, but you could also add, like, let's say you want to let them run Adobe Reader, and there it is. Let's say you want to add uh, Movie Maker, we can do that. 
we can add PowerPoint Viewer, why not? So yeah, just a single click on these will add them. And then I think if you were to click on like Adobe Reader here, and then yeah, remove this title. So you could remove, let's say we don't want them accessing Adobe Reader. So yeah, you can set that up. You can go to next and this is where you can set restrictions for when certain programs will be allowed to be launched so let's say pinball i only want them to be able to play pinball on sunday so let's say i want to get rid of every other day of the week at every other time yes yeah, so you can go through set all these restrictions up however you want and then it tells you down here, program started before block times are not subject to restrictions. So yeah, that's a way of bypassing it. If you just know to launch the program before the block time period starts, it'll just stay open. It's not gonna just close the program when it gets to a certain time. So we'll just hit next here. I mean, I'm sure you get the idea there. You can configure internet settings and go in here and you know modify. This is just the standard Windows internet settings panel so you can go through here modify these settings to your liking and we'll hit next and then it just brings you back here to the initial screen so we'll hit finish and this is very important too you want to make sure you set a master password we'll just uh do mjd i'll show you how that ties into the interface once we log into the other account so we're going to log off of my account here we'll just switch user and now you see there's this other account here with the eve profile picture so we'll log in Ooh, there it is so yeah oh well that's not supposed to <laughs> that is not supposed to happen you're not supposed to be able to access the start menu so that's uh that's great i guess maybe that was because it was doing the initial setup you know like windows was setting up preferences for the account and normally it does open the start menu that's right like when you log into an account for the first time you can't access the start menu i can press the windows key all i want nothing's going to happen it has blocked that i don't think you can even press Control alt delete yeah you can't open up task manager so they have a lot of restrictions in place to make sure that you can't bypass the disney desktop environment here there is a replacement for the start menu though and that is if you click down here You've got, you know, some options here about Disney Desktop. Return to Windows, which will ask you for the master password if you want to close out of the Disney Desktop software. You can start your screen, save, or terminate your program. And very interestingly, they've got hardware stats in here. Your battery level, memory usage, CPU usage, and, you know, how much space for you've got on your hard drive, which I find kind of nice that they've got right here in this menu. Of course, as a kid... You won't really know what any of this means, I'm sure. I mean, maybe if you if you were a little bit older, perhaps you, you might. But uh, yeah, I find that interesting that they've got that in there. So yeah, we'll just close out of that. And this is your, your dock down here, which has all the programs that you're allowed to launch. So we can access the web browser here. We'll just start with that, why not? The web browser is extremely basic. Of course, we're not connected to the internet, but you can't actually like type in a web address you are only able to go to specific pages we'll come back to this in a moment here that your parents or whoever would set in the favorites here so you can click on favorites and it will bring up all of the allowed websites that you can go to but if you want to add something to it you just click on this option up here it'll ask you for the master password so you enter that and then you get an address bar here that you can you know Go to like google.com if we were connected to the internet we could and then you can also say you want to add google to the favorites so this comes up with this parent alert please read this online safety message before adding any websites to your favorite list once you add a website to your favorite list the disney desktop browser online protection will be disabled for that site so your child will be able to access all the content on that site you should never add a new website to your favorite list unless you have reviewed the site and are comfortable with your child viewing all the content available on that site so yeah you would hit okay and then it would say added to favorites and you know you can actually name it google here and make available to all users, enable all pages within this website, approval of this site expires. So you could also set like temporary approval if you only wanted to allow access to a site for like one day or one week, you can set that there. And then you just, I believe, click on this here. And there you go, now we go into favorites. Yeah, there it is, Google. And then once you wanna get out of the parental mode here you just hit log out and then it'll ask you for the master password again once you click on there so yeah that's a, a common theme with all these programs and this interface too with these large buttons up here i mean if you watch the original video you'll know that in disney picks 
and in the mix central software it was kind of the same thing you had these large buttons to navigate around the program so yeah it makes sense you know you just want to keep it simple for the the kids who'd be using this so yeah i don't know what like what is this here is this um oh these are some of the included games okay this right here i believe is the okay yeah calculator fancy calc Ooh, so you got a calculator you've got like a sticky notes program thing easy notes you know you can enter in some text here you know this is where you you create the notes so you can't just like click on here and, and like edit the note in real time you have to click on it, it'll open the program and then you can make a new note here and then add that apply and then close out of it and then that note will be on the desktop as well so there you go this one here is i think like a, a puzzle so you can move it around here um, evidently you can't move it like over here. I guess this area is like reserved for icons. Is that the way it is with everything? Yeah. So you can't move that over there. And yeah, it's like a, you know, it just scrambles it and you, you gotta just, you know, push the pieces around to, to make the puzzle. So you got like a, a couple games here. I think this is just a clock. Yeah, this is another game. It's like a matching thing. You've got, what is this? Table tennis? Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's cool that they're all in like these little mini windows. They almost are like gadgets. And then you can personalize your interface too and apply some desktop themes. So in addition to the Hyperdesk themes that you can get access to from the standard Windows interface, you also have these additional themes for the Disney interface. And you can also disable, oh, they are, they are actually called gadgets, look at that. So you can enable some additional gadgets to say you don't want any of these. We can just uncheck all that and say you want like my pictures and say we maybe want to add this again and you got some tray skins as well that's actually nice so we can maybe add like this one and let's apply maybe the the cars theme and we'll hit okay and then it will apply that for us so there you go and now you've got the my pictures thing down here which is just a little gadget that will shuffle between pictures i guess let's take a look at We've got fun cam, but we also have Disney email because of course every kid's favorite thing to do is uh, launch an email client here. Welcome to Disney email. Do you want to set up your mail account now? Yeah, so you would need to have a parent to do this or someone who knows the master password because it asks you for that. And then it's pretty much just a standard, you know, email setup procedure here you have to go through. Once you set that up, then your your mail would, would show in here. And I guess we can also take a look at the fun cam program because I've not messed around with this yet. So I'm kind of curious to see like what you can do. So yeah, there it is just like, you know, a view of the webcam. So the little light comes on up there as you can see. And so, you know, we can take a photo and we can add some wonderful effects. I'm sure to apply effects, use your mouse to draw a line. Okay. So we can draw a line and that's going to warp the image. We can, uh, we can twist it like, oh yeah, you can probably do a lot. <laughs> You can do some great stuff to this, blur it, and you can make it grayscale. So yeah, that's definitely a nice piece of art. We're going to save that. That is uh, beautiful. So yeah, it's just like a little, you know, webcam. You can mess around with it and do whatever you want kind of thing. Are, are there any settings in here? Let's see. Clear image cache on exit. Okay. Use recent device. Um, oh yeah, so if you had like a an external webcam, uh, you could, you know, set that up in here. But I mean, I'm sure you just want to use the internal one. And you can adjust some settings as well, like the brightness. We can, you know lower that if we want or make it like super bright you can adjust the contrast the hue so yeah you can get kind of artistic in here maybe make the saturation super high maybe lower the sharpness you know increase the gamma there yeah you can <laughs> you can definitely uh screw around with this but yeah so that is the the little fun cam webcam program i will have this restore media link down below and while you're down there in the description box be sure to check out today's video sponsor Linode who I want to thank for making this episode possible if you've ever been looking for a place to host your website or game server look no further than Linode's cloud computing services they offer affordable Linux virtual machines starting at just five dollars per month that you can do practically anything with and with their one-click app marketplace you don't have to be an expert either you can browse through a wide variety 
variety of applications and game servers to install on your Linode in no time. You could set up a Minecraft or CSGO server to play with friends, or install WordPress to build your own website. Heck, you could even set up a Kali Linux box if you so desire. Even better, as a thank you for sitting through this ad, Linode is offering everybody watching right now a free two-month $100 credit that you can spend on any of their cloud computing services, just as long as you sign up for a new account through my link below. It's a great way to get started with cloud computing, and I really appreciate them for their continued support of these vintage computing antics that we get into on this channel. So be sure to check them out, and huge thanks again to Linode for making today's episode possible. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. That is the restore process from start to finish here on the Disney Net Pal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.